So you warmed up a little bit. So in a little while we're gonna play some music. Um, but actually, you guys have some talent. You you really do. Um, I want to address I want to address a little bit. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about the, the the solos. Now, of course, you know in this tune that all the chords are dominant chords. So when I hear a major seventh against a dominant chord, unless I really hear you resolve it properly, then I'm going to say you don't know what you don't understand what, you're, what you what you just did. <laughs> All right? Now I'm I'm especially talking to the first Daniel that took the solo on the saxophone. Okay? So you need to listen, because you, you know, you, you have some music in you, but you need to listen. You're at that place where you need to hear the harmonies. Pay attention to the harmonies. This is, this is an ensemble. This is, this is a, an ensemble is a group where, you know, you, you kind of feed off of each other. You kind of listen to what the pianist is doing what the pianist is playing, and the guitar, and hope that they're playing the right chord, right? Uh, but uh, assuming that they are, you want to make sure that you're playing in harmony with them. And if you make a mistake, you're listening uh, so intently that you'll be able to resolve that mistake properly. Okay. The other thing I want to talk about a little bit is uh, the, the second saxophone player. Um, uh, you played some interesting things, and um, I'm concerned about your rhythmic understanding. See, when when Coltrane played a lot of notes, each note found its own 16th uh, entity. In other words, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. I mean, it was really precise, or there were 16th note triplets. Right? So, uh, You've got to figure out what you're doing, and you you don't want to just. I mean, there's a little bit of thought in what you do as an improviser. You know, the old people used to say, "You got to feel it. Don't think about anything. Just play." But you can't isolate. You can't isolate feeling from some thought, and you can't, and you shouldn't isolate thought from some feeling. Now, um, also, uh, I mean, I, I know you like to play that little B flat down there, but but you know, just make sure it it, it appears at an appropriate time. Um, guitar solo was pretty good. I enjoyed that. I, that was uh, right in keeping with you know, the harmonies, and uh, uh, 
Ted on bass, right? Yeah. Um, sort of reminded me of a Midwestern bass player. Uh, uh, I, I, I would suggest, you know, one of the reasons why young people have problems when they're improvising is because they, for some reason, have forgotten that uh, technique is still important and that you have to do the grunge work. You, you know what I mean? You have to still work on the scales. You have to still, because sometimes, you know, we stop in the middle of a phrase when we should be trying to fill that phrase out. Uh, but we can't figure out what to do. Uh, we can't figure out what to do because we've let our technique lapse. So we need to work on scales. We need to work on playing scales in different rhythms, like playing scales uh, in uh, even eighth or sixteenth note patterns, playing scales in triplet note patterns. Uh, you know, right? Or and if you're a little more advanced than that, then you know you can do it a little faster, or you can do sixteenth note uh, uh, triplet or even sixteenth note patterns. Now, so I I would suggest to all of you, first of all, that you work on your on the various scales, uh, all of them, you know, the diminished scales, the, the, the different forms of the melodic scale and the harmonic scale, all those things are really, really important. And you really need to hear the scales, not just, I mean, practice them till you can actually hear them in your minds. Uh, yeah. That's, that's it. So I want to actually go over the, oh, oh the pianist, Jesse. Yeah. You got to figure out what you want to do with that left hand. Yeah. Uh, and you've got to play the right harmonies with the solos that you're playing in your right hand. Yeah, especially when you get to the five chord. It always, some, something happens and you, you, you haven't decided whether you want to go back down to the four. Mm -hmm. right? um, and the last time I checked, the piano had 88 notes. So they can all be used. You know, you don't have to stay in that one little range there, right? Because that gets boring. You have to compel people to listen to you. You know, if you don't do that, they turn off. They just sign right on off. And they start talking. You know, and especially in the society that we're in now, you know, this is like a remote control society. You know, <laughs> you know you're just kind of uh, grab the remote, you know, and listen a little bit. No excitement. Psh, you know, just change the channel. So, uh, and, uh, you know, being that people eventually are going to start paying to, to listen to you, you know, they, can, they feel that they can tune out when they get ready, right? And they may pay to hear you once or maybe twice, and then if you don't turn them on, that's it. You know, they move on to the next person. All right, so we're going to start off... Uh, in the solo section again. Drummer, uh, actually, uh, is pretty good. That was, that was pretty nice, nice little uh, um, fours and, and, I mean, you know, it was pretty good. But I think what you, what you want to do is try to create some excitement for yourself. Create something a little different, a little bit out of the box, as long as you can get back to the meter. 
as long as you can get back to the one. All right? Because there's a lot of good drummers in towns like this. <laughs> and, you know, <coughs> you're, you're developing so that you can compete with the best drummers. You know, the, you know uh, all the drummers who are in this town and all the drummers who are uh, extant, you know, anywhere else in this country. Because it is about where, the, where people are going to spend their money, right? That's assuming that you want to continue to be a musician. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So let's start with let's start with uh, the piano solo, and then go to the uh, uh, the first Daniel that played the. Uh, yeah, the, f the guy who took the first solo, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, and then we'll go to the second saxophone player and then the guitar and bass man, okay? And then you can do some, some call and response stuff for the drummer. One, two, oh, one, two, three, and... <laughs> Since you, you have two hands there, uh, we, we want to have you punctuate a little more. I mean, I hear what you're doing, and it's not bad. It really isn't. But I want you to accent it a little more um, so that by the time it gets out into the audience, people really understand what you're trying to do. All right? Same place. One, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> Be cool. All right. <laughs> so, so just stay right there. Uh, so uh, now, give me like, give me something like. Uh, You see what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be each, every time you make the change, but, uh, you know, give me like, give me the tonic in the fifth mm -hmm. uh, two or three times within the form. Okay. All right. One, two, a uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, let's see, Daniel, right? Right? Yeah. Saxophone. Yeah. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Now, do you have any idea of what you just did? Yeah. Can you tell me about it? I started out with a whole tone scale. Okay. And but then I played the uh, flat nine on the C. Okay. All right. And but why did you play the E flat when you played it uh, without actually resolving it? See, where you are right now, I'd like to hear you resolve that. Okay. All right. Um, there are several ways to resolve it, but let's see what you do. All right? One, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> by the piano. All right. Okay. I want you to hear the chords that he's playing. Okay. And then you know we'll we'll start your solo again. One, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> okay, hold it, hold it, hold it. I, I guess my my communication skills are not that good, but I want you to listen while you're playing. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> one, two, a uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> too bad. That's not too bad. What I want you to do right now is try playing on each chord phrases that are that have notes that are really close. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and then try to do that with the chord, the next uh, chord and then uh, just just keep your solo really closely cropped okay. all right um and let's let's see what you come up with uh no you know no compound stuff right now okay okay one two a uh, one two three four <laughs> Oh, 
still have that little thing where we're playing a few notes. Uh, sometimes it's major sevenths, sometimes it's even uh, you know other other to tones that are not necessarily chord tones. We're soloing, you and me. Okay. I'm I'm accompanying you. Here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Instead of going through all that, trying to figure out what to play um, and trying to sound great, um, let's f identify, let's play chord tones mostly with just a very few passing tones. Okay. All right? few passing tones. So we're looking at one, three, five, seven, nine. Uh, sometimes uh, you can put the the uh, sixth in there or the thirteenth. Okay. All right. All right. So here we go. One, two, three, four. <laughs> That had a little more continuity. Uh, so I, I think what you want to do is, while you're working on stuff, uh, and you're working on soloing on blues, and all the, remember all these blues uh, pieces, well, most of them have dominant chords, <laughs> right? I mean, they start on dominant chords, and they end on dominant chords, especially this blues. Now. Um, uh, right now, I would suggest that you just, you know, kind of uh, rein it in a little bit, come in and, and, and work on uh, the chord tones, figure out what the chord tones are, and play with that for a minute, and gradually bring more passing tones in. Now, what is a passing tone? So, so you don't you don't lean on it too long, do you? Uh, I guess so. Yes, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. All right. Let's hear it for Daniel. Yeah. All right. So, um, let's let's work. Uh, you can get back to the piano, Jesse. Uh, the other saxophone player. Oh. One, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> So one of the 
things we want to try to do is not get too far behind the beat, right? Uh, you know, I know we're trying to be hip, but um, you get too far behind the beat, you know, it starts to sound out of kilter a little bit. Then we start to wonder, does he know what he's doing? You know? So, um, you know, you can kind of, uh, in your phrasing, uh, kind of get a little bit behind the beat if you wish, but, uh, you know, keep it so that us retarded people understand what's going on. You know? Okay? One, two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> That's not bad. That's not bad. There are times, though, when it sounds like you're trying, you're fumbling, trying to figure out what to really play. You know, it's like uh, it's like when you hear piano players playing like uh, two keys at once by mistake or something like that. You know, like I do a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> um, so, um, I think what you want to do is you need to have, if I say we're going to start over, then in your mind, I want you to have at least the first two phrases that you're going to play. You need to always mentally be ahead of where you are physically. All right? It's like think before you act. All right? Here we go. One, two, a uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> See, if I had a tape recorder, I'd play that back for you so that you could hear those instances where it sounds like you're fumbling just a oh, little bit. I know, bit. I know, I, I hear it. I yeah. <laughs> okay. I know. <laughs> okay. And, you know, so there are a lot of people who may not hear it, but the people who are musical will kind of understand that. And, again, it's like... Oh, uh, I don't know. What's he doing? What's he? Does he know what he's doing? Or is he is he trying to do too many things at once? You know. So uh, have an idea. If you if you're gonna be ahead of where you where you start, as you remember what I said, have two at least two phrases that uh, you know that you're gonna play when you start. And that should keep you ahead of the game. That should keep you ahead of, you know, where you are physically. Okay. We're going to try this again. One, okay. two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> Thank you. 
right. That's 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 not bad. Uh, you know, you got some talent, fellow. You know, uh, we just need somebody. You know, you just need a little work. You need uh, some conceptual work. Okay. Because uh, you know, you've you've got you you've got some stuff. Um, all right, let's give him a hand. Yeah. So now we're going to work uh, with uh, Ted. Yeah. Uh, solo. One, two, a uh, one, two, three, four. because you couldn't think of nothing else to play, huh? That's right. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why you couldn't think of nothing else to play is, when was the last time you really practiced on getting around that bass? Hopefully every day, but. <laughs> well, what do you practice? What do you practice? Usually practice uh, a lot of practicing stuff. Yeah, like what? Give me, give me an idea of what that is. Just sonatas, you know, trying to do some scales and stuff like that. Okay. So let's do uh, a B flat harmonic minor scale, uh, uh, two octaves. Say starting on B flat one. No, that's two. That, yeah. Uh, uh, let's try even note patterns. Let's say we'll call them eighth note patterns. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and three and four. Da 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 da. Okay, that might be too fast. So let's try it again. Uh, one and two and three and four and one and two. Okay. So you, you hear yourself playing the same note twice, right? Let's, let's try it again. One, two, three, four. Yeah, play it again. Yes. Ah, okay, let's try it again a little slower. One and two and three and four and one. Uh, 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 uh. Ah, ah. Yes, yes. Yeah. See, we're not talking about what we say we do. We're talking about what we do, and we're talking about results. You understand that? You know, what musicians have to produce are results. Because this is a service-oriented business, and because people pay for what they want and what they want to hear, they choose people, if they know that they can do that, they choose people that produce great results. Now, we're not talking about somebody who practices for 20 minutes or 30 minutes a day because, you know, there are people out there who really work hard at this stuff. And um, if I ask Dave Holland to play a, a B-flat harmonic scale, he would be dead on it. Mm -hmm. And I know it because I've worked with him. I mean, superb musicianship, and it takes it takes work to get there.
If you, ever, if you can find my For All Seasons CD, he's on it. You should check him out. And uh, um, so, I mean, you're, little do you know it, and little do any of you, I mean, maybe none of you may know this, but when you, once you get out of here, get out of school and put yourself into that professional market, you're competing with everybody. I don't care how good or bad you are, you're competing with people who, you know, they'll do what they need to do to take your gig if they don't think you're good enough. Yeah. So, uh, let's hear that scale again. Uh, and this time, we're going to be dead on it, right? One and two and three and four and... That's a little better. That's a little better. Just a little, few, one or two notes a little out, but, but that's the idea. And so what you need to do is, you know, work on facility because uh, that's why you're playing major sevenths and, you know, twice and, and tonics twice and, uh, you know, flat at seconds twice, you shouldn't have to do that. So, all right, uh, I want to try one more thing with you. Uh, let's, uh, why don't you build me uh, a, a mixolydian mode starting on B flat. That's right. All right, now play it up, ascend two octaves and then descend. Okay, the, 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 the sixth was out. Yeah, okay, all right, try it again. you can use in your solo on, on this piece, mm -hmm. right? You can use either in tetrachords or you can use it, I mean, there's so many ways you can manipulate that mode, mm -hmm. all right? All right, so let's, let's, uh, da -da 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 -da. Henry, yes? We got to call it from here. Oh, call it! <laughs> <laughs> okay, all Henry. right. It's uh, time's up. This is Henry Butler. Give him a hand. Thank you, man. Thank you. Well, thank all of you. Thank you for ha thanks for having me, and uh, we'll see you guys at uh, is it five? Five o'clock forum. Five o'clock. Yeah. Cool. <coughs> thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.